Hey everyone. <laughs> oh my God, as soon as I started filming, the guy across the way decided to start working on his dirt bike and revving it up. So I hope you can't hear that. If you can, I'm so sorry, but I have no idea how long he's gonna be at that. And if you can hear it. In today's video, I want to go over a question that I received uh, on a video that I did recently. And the video, the question is from, let me just pull it up here, is from Tajinder. Hello. And um, she asked uh, how I found my par uh, where to park the tiny house. Uh, and she says, I believe you're parked in a mobile home park. My concern would be safety as the perception of these parks is not very good. So I thought that was actually a really good question to, to answer, a good topic to discuss, um, because I actually get that question a fair amount. And uh, it's not a concern for me, but I'll tell you how I found my parking spot and uh, how I feel about being here now that I've been here. Well, it'll be a year in uh, July. So when I was looking for a parking spot, I, um, I really, I really did not have an idea that uh, of where I would park in the city. I actually thought that I would have to park my tiny house somewhere in a farmer's field outside of the Calgary city limits because as far as I knew, there was no way to park a, t a tiny house on, um, well, on a trailer, but actually any tiny house, no matter uh, whether it was foundation built or on a, a trailer. Um, I didn't think there was a way to park one legally within Calgary city limits. I didn't see that there was any way around the uh, minimum size restriction for a foundation built house. I was never going to put my house on a foundation anyways. My expectation was that I would be outside of city limits. It wasn't my uh, dream location, but ultimately I hope to be uh, on Vancouver Island or the interior of BC anyways. So I knew that this was uh, something that was only going to last a few years at most. One of the things that I did and one of the things that I recommend people do is just talk to everybody that you know about what you're doing and about what you're looking for. Um, so I talked to anybody who had an acreage. Hello. And uh, really nobody had any suggestions and Calgary's pretty strict. But there was one person that I knew that mentioned just in passing, what about, about a mobile home park? That got me thinking about the privately owned parks. So that's what I did. Um, and that was, I moved in last July, at the very beginning of July, uh, I had the house delivered and moved into it. So when I started looking for a parking spot, the build was well underway. You may be thinking, and I know my friends were certainly thinking, um, wondering, worrying about uh, leaving the place to park so late. You know, I, the build was underway. There was no way that I was not going to take possession of the house. Uh, I, in, you know, it, it was an interesting dynamic because my friends, because they love me, uh, were really concerned about where I was going to park this house. And I, because I just always felt that this was what I was meant to do and that everything was going to work out was uh, absolutely certain that the right place would, would, would come, that I would find it um, because it was meant to be. Um, and you know, some people may say that that's naive. I say that that is basically manifesting uh, your destiny and your dream. If you believe something is going to work out, then it works out. I mean, obviously you have to do something. You can't just sit here and ride Faith Airlines and expect things to come to you. You have to go out and find things. But I knew that I would find a place to park and I was confident that uh, that wouldn't be an issue. If I was going to be parked in a farmer's field, then I would have the solar uh, system put in. I would have had a uh, fresh water tank and a gray water tank. Um, I would have had to find a spot that um, could have, I could have 
plugged into because I don't think that solar panels would have been enough. I was going to have the compost toilet, but that would have been additional expenses and I would have needed to have those things built into the house. So over the break between Christmas and New Year's, I start to, to just do some research online. Um, where were the mobile home parks in Calgary and surrounding areas? And I found a broker who actually um, works with mobile homes. So I phoned his office. I said, I basically explained what my situation was and what I was looking for. And did he know if the mobile home parks in Calgary, any of them would consider a tiny house on wheels? Um, we did a little bit of talking and when I explained to him that I had registered the trailer as a park model, that was a big green light for him because um, several of the mobile home parks in Calgary already have park model trailers in the parks. He told me that he would call me back. He was going to have his assistant do some research to see if any of the parks in Calgary had openings. There was only one park in the, in the city that had any uh, vacancies. He sent me a map and an information sheet and he told me that the office manager, Shar, was actually in the uh, office here over the break. My park has a what they call a clubhouse that has the office in it and it's basically facilities you can use and rent if you have you know want to hold functions or anything like that. There's also uh, some laundry services in there just basically a couple washers and dryers and uh, that she was in so if I wanted to drive out there and take a look at the park take a look at the lots if there's you know if, if it interests you I've let Char know that you're probably going to be doing that and you might pop in well I hung up and uh, within five minutes I was in my car <laughs> drive it over here so it was winter and when I drove into the park I wasn't sure what to expect so I should say that I grew up in the Northwest Territories in a mining town Kaminko mining town. My dad was a heavy equipment operator at the mine and we lived in a trailer, a mobile home for, oof, I moved from Portugal when I was four and I think we moved into the house when I was uh, 12 or 13. I grew up in a mobile home park and I loved it. It was perfectly normal for me of course as a kid there were lots of kids around we had a blast and uh, so to me living in a mobile home park has never had a stigma attached to it and I do understand that for some people it does I think the show trailer park boys hasn't helped that <laughs> any um, the mobile home park I grew up in was nothing like the trailer park boys and the mobile home park that I live in now is nothing like the trailer park boys though there are some interesting characters here so I just wanted to sort of say that so that you know anybody who's listening can understand that for me this was uh, this was not that big of a deal however I did not know what to expect I didn't know how well it would be run I didn't know how um, what the state of the trailers would be um, so driving through here was really interesting uh, and like I say, it was winter, so I didn't get to see the yards, what the yards looked like or anything like that. But I was really impressed. It was the middle of a work day. So there, the people that I saw out, there were, you know, some older couples that were out for walks. I saw a family or two with their dogs and the kids out, you know, preschool kids. It seemed uh, clean. It was uh, open and the location was awesome, really awesome. So I was impressed. Then I popped by the clubhouse to meet Char and she was incredible. She was really enthusiastic. When I came to see her, um, I was prepared. I had my blueprints with me. I had uh, brought pictures of models that were, you know, gooseneck models, the same sort of look as mine would be. And I had also brought printouts from my builder's website that showed that she was CSA certified. Um, and that uh, Teacup Tiny Homes was CSA certified and I think it's RVIA certified. Sorry, Jen, if you're watching. Anyways, that it was a builder that was building two codes. I already knew that that was going to be important if they were going to accept me. I explained what I was building. I showed her what I was building and the blueprints. Um, and I also made sure to let her know that 
the trailer, the home, would be a park model, not an RV. Actually, those were the two things that allowed the mobile home park to accept me. The fact that the trailer was registered as a park model and not an RV, uh, because if it had been, it would have been non-negotiable, it would have been an automatic no, and that the builder was building to code, was CSA certified. Only thing that I thought might be a sticking point was the fact that it was a gooseneck trailer. After I we had ch chatted and I got back home, I sent her a couple of YouTube videos of a gooseneck trailer, tiny homes on wheels, so she could get a sense of what that would look like. I wanted her to see that it wouldn't look like an RV, that it would look like a home um, still, even though it was a gooseneck. So I left that with her. And she was going to talk to the manager at the head office, which was in Vancouver. So it took about less than a week before I got a voicemail on my way home one day. And she was so excited because her and the office man or the manager in Vancouver had been through every uh, page on my builder's website. They had watched the videos <laughs> multiple times. They looked at the blueprints and they were thrilled to have me here. They were really excited and she really made a point of saying that um, that because I provided so much information and because I had used a, you know chosen a builder a professionally built home by a builder that was CSA certified uh, and the trailer was registered as a park model that it was a go. So that's how I found my parking spot and uh, it was a very exciting day when I let my builder know that I had found my spot. I actually took a picture of myself in front of the sign coming into the park that has the name of the mobile home park. And it just said, you know, home. And I sent that to her and she was so excited for me. It was a relief for me. I will totally admit it because I was happy to stay in the city. Um, but I always knew I would find a parking spot. So I think it was a much bigger relief to my friends who were worried about where I was gonna park and starting to really stress out on my behalf. So I pay rent for this spot and I pay $810 a month to rent um, my spot. And I've, my previous video where I just talk about, you know, springtime and the projects that I'm gonna do, I walk around the house and you can see outside and you can see a bit of the lot and I'll put some pictures in of, of uh, a little bit of video in of me, uh, of the house pulling into the lot and all of that. I'm going to be covered in cat hair by the time I'm done because she wants to eat. <laughs> she will not leave me alone. That was the beginning of the process and the acceptance from the park. About um, a couple of weeks later, I actually had a meeting here at the park with the park manager, Char, and the park um, handyman to see the lot and to get a sense of what might need to be done to the lot in order to get ready for the house. I showed up here and I had my blueprints with me and uh, Tony, he thought I was nuts. You know, he's like, I'm sure in his mind, he's thinking, what is this chick doing? What is this crazy chick doing? So I showed him the blueprints and he asked me multiple times how long the house was. And it's 37 feet long from the front of the gooseneck to the back here. He had his little spray can and he sprayed out where the house would sit on the lot because it had to be far enough back here so that the sewer um, is right underneath the trailer here. But then that means that the water line, which came up, at the front of the lot was not underneath the trailer and that has to come up underneath the trailer not the gooseneck but the actual body of the trailer that meant that the water line had to be moved i think it had to be moved about 20 feet they would have to dig that down about um six to eight feet and then move the water line uh, uh, underneath and have it come up um, and i knew i wasn't going to pay for that because I couldn't afford that, but the park was willing to do that. During that conversation, I mentioned to, to Tony that um, the appliances were all going to be propane except for the fridge and the washer dryer combo unit. I'm so glad that I did mention that because Tony said to Char, I don't think that they're, you're allowed to have propane appliances inside the house. Turned out it wasn't allowed 
and that meant that I had to have the builder reconfigure because we we couldn't have the tankless on-demand hot water tank that we wanted and we couldn't find one that would run on the electric that would run on the amperage of the house which is 50 amp service so that meant I have to had to have a hot water tank put in and some of the plumbing sort of rerouted um, and that cost me about fifteen hundred dollars to do I'm glad that I found that out before the house pulled in but it was still expensive change during the build because they had gotten so far along um, and a good learning piece so keep in mind if you're going to park in a municipality you're likely not going to be able to have propane appliances inside it wasn't a problem for the furnace or the stove because it was just a matter of changing the fitting on the end of the hose and it could be converted to natural gas which is what I'm hooked up one of the the requirements from the park was that the house be hooked to city utilities water sewer um, um, electrical and gas my philosophy is that, that there's nothing but solutions the goal is to identify the problem and then find a solution because as my builder says everything is figure outable and that's absolutely true the house had to get to completion before it could get the certification number you know that it had been inspected at every stage the park did the work to the lot on sort of trust that the house would end up having that certification and I would it would they would be able to accept me but I put the builder in touch with the um, the office manager so because she had questions along the way about the build and I thought instead of going through the middleman me it made sense for those two to communicate and so you know Jen at teacup was able to answer the questions that Shar had and everything was copacetic it was it was really good as soon as the build was finished and it had the, the certification number I believe that's what it is then it satisfied all the requirements I came in to sign the lease the park required uh, a lease, one year lease for uh, the lot. And I was happy to sign that. After a year, it goes month to month. They required that the tires come off the trailer and that the house be skirted in, just like any other trailer in the mobile home park, which I did. Um, I also, they also, the Tony and um, the fellow who built my, did my skirting and built my steps. Steph, who also lives in the park, so does Tony. Um, actually, so did the plumber gas fitter guy who hooked me up. Everything that I needed was right here. All of the, the people that I needed to get myself set up were right here. I think they were all kind of excited about having a tiny house in the park. They even took the hitch off of the front of the gooseneck so that it could be skirted in flat and not have the, the hitch sticking out. And that's also tucked under the trailer along with the wheels. It looks like a small mobile home. And, and because I had the underneath of the gooseneck shedded in as my storage shed with a door and, and a window, it's really clean and looks really nice. And that was one of the things that I made sure to tell the, you know, Char and so that she could pass that along was that I, I had every intention of doing that. So even though it was a gooseneck, and therefore different than anything else they'd ever had in the park when it was done all screwed it in it was going to it was not going to look like a gooseneck it was going to look like just a very small trailer and I'm glad that I did that because first of all it's a great use of space and secondly it kind of got past that little bit of resistance that was the only sort of resistance that that I had they weren't quite sure what that would look like which I totally understand that's how I found my spot um, those were the requirements for being in my spot I've always said that you have to make it easy for them to say yes and if you're going to make it easy for them to say yes you have to have the answers if you're going to approach a mobile home park about having your tiny house there then you want to come prepared you don't want to walk in and just have some ideas or just you know just have a verbal description of what you're planning on doing I had blueprints with an engineer stamp on them obviously professionally done bl blueprints so they had a comfort level of knowing that this was a, a home that was going to be built properly that the builder was CSA certified so the home was going to be built safely 
those are two huge things. You have to come in and make it really easy for them to visualize the house in the, in the spot and for them to say yes. So when they ask you questions about how it's built, then have the answers. If they ask questions about the trailer, have the answers, have the specifications, know what you're talking about. If possible, make an introduction between your builder and the park manager or the people in charge so that when you can't answer the questions, they can go to the builder and get that sense of comfort. Because what they're looking for is to see that it's built to a code because their insurance is going to require it. Uh, and so will yours. So those are the things that I really recommend. So that answers the question, uh, the first part of the question, how did I find my parking spot? Next, I'm going to talk about how I feel living in the mobile home park now that I've been here, you know, almost a year.